Hey everyone, welcome to today's video. Today I'm going to show you how you can save and load information between play sessions in your Unity game. I've got this basic setup so far. I've got a canvas with a panel, title, a few sliders, a few toggles, and a couple buttons here for saving and loading. Right now, none of this does anything, but what we're going to set it up to do is to save whatever values we have set for our sliders and whatever values we have set for our toggles when we click the save button and then load in that information that we saved back into these UI elements when we click the load button. To start off, I'm going to make a new script here. We'll actually make a, a scripts folder first just to keep organized. And for a script, let's call it, call it our save manager. And right away, I'm going to add that to my canvas so I don't forget to do that later. So let's do that right now. There we go. Let's open up Visual Studio. And right away, let's get rid of the update and start methods. We won't need those. First, use a few namespaces here. So we're gonna need to use system. We're gonna need to use system.io. We'll also need, this is a long one here, system.runtime.serialization.formatters.binary. There we go. And then finally, we're gonna use Unity Engine. Dot UI so that we can access our toggles and sliders. And then in our save manager class here, the first method we're going to make is called public void save game. Make it public so that you can attach it to your button. And then in here, we're going to create a new binary formatter. Call it BF, new binary formatter. And then we're also going to make a new file. We'll do file stream. Just call it file. To create this file to store our information, so let's do file equals capital file dot create and then we'll do application dot persistent data path and then i usually do plus slash save dot dat just like that what this will do is it'll create this new file in wherever the persistent data path is on whatever platform you're using and then call the file save dot dat but we also want to account for if there's a file already saved there we want to open it instead of creating a new one what you can do for that is you can check if the file exists. So if capital file dot exists, and then we can pass in the same path we just made here, like that, do a little copy paste. Then what we're gonna do instead is make our file equal to capital file dot open, and then pass in that path. And then we'll just add an else here so that if there isn't the file, it will create it that is actually in the else. And I am missing something with my open here. You also have to pass in a file mode here too. So let's pass in just file mode. And since we're opening it, we'll pass in open. Now we need to make a class that will store the information we want to save in this file. So to do that, we're going to make a new class under our save manager class here. Let's call it public class save data. And we're going to tag this class as serializable so that it can be saved with our binary formatter. Now to store our data, let's make a list here. Let's make it public. And this one's gonna store float. And let's call it slider values. And then we're also gonna make another list that will store bools. And we'll call it toggle values. We also wanna make sure that when this class gets created that these lists also get created. So let's make a new constructor here called public save data. And we'll just say slider values equals new list uh, float. And we'll do the same for our toggle values. Toggle values equals new list pool. Now we also need to make references to our UI elements so that we can access them in here. Let's do a new public slider array. Let's just call it sliders. And we'll do a new public toggle array and let's call it toggles. Now we need to create our new save data class here. So we'll just do save data. Let's call it data equals new save data. And now for each slider that we have, so let's do slider s in sliders, we can get that value and add it to our slider values list in our save data. So to do that, we can do data dot slider values dot add and then to get our actual slider value we can do s dot value and then we also want to save all of our toggle information too so we'll do another for each here this time this time doing toggle call it t in toggles and then the same thing here except for this time we're going to do data dot toggle values and then we can do dot add 
and then t dot is on will give us our full value we need. Now we have all of our information we need to save stored in our class we just made here. And now we need to serialize it. So to do that, you can do EF, our binary formatter we created earlier, dot serialize, and then pass in our file, so where it's gonna be serialized to and then pass in our data so what is being serialized. Another thing too, any information that you are storing in this class here or any other serializable classes also has to be serializable. So things like floats, spools, ints uh, are all serializable. But for example, if you wanted to store a mono behavior class in a serializable class, it won't let you do that since mono behaviors are not serializable. And now that we're all serialized, we can close our file. And then I'll just add a little debug message here just saying that our save game was successful. So that's our save game method made now. So let's go into our Unity project here and go to our save button and let's add a new on click. We'll drag in our canvas here and go to our save manager and choose save game. For our save manager, we also need to add in our sliders and our toggles. So I'm just gonna lock this for a second here. And there we go, we should be all set up now. So let's run the game and see what happens. I'll just play around with these sliders a little bit, put them in random spots, I'll click these toggles a bunch too, so they're in different spots too. And then we'll click our save button here. I'll actually open up the console first. Save, we can see it saved our game. Let's stop running Unity for a sec. I'll show you how to get to your persistent data path. So to get to your persistent data path on Windows at least, you go to percent app data percent, and then it'll toss you in here. You actually have to go back to your app data first though. And then go to local low. Uh, I'm set under default company right now, so it'll be whatever your company name and your player settings is. Click on that, you can see I have a lot in here, but I am currently working on save and load demo. And then you can see that our save information is in here. I'll open it up in notepad too, just so you can see what it looks like. It's just some pretty useless information to the human eye, but the information is saved inside of here. So now that we've saved our information, now we need to load it back in as well. Let's go back into Visual Studio here and let's add a new method to our save manager. And let's make this one public again for our button. Let's call it load game. So in here, the first thing we want to do is make sure that our save data actually exists. So we'll just do a quick check here. The same file dot exists we used earlier for creating the file. We'll just go up and copy it again from here. There we go, because we don't want to load something that doesn't exist. And then inside this is where we'll put all of our load game code. We'll make another binary formatter here. Call it bf again, do binary formatter. Another file as well, file stream. File on this one we can assign right away file.open and pass in the path and file mode.open since we remember to do that after we forgot last time. So now we need to deserialize our file that we saved earlier. So to do that, we'll make a save data. So this is where our deserialized information will get stored. Call it data again. And then we can do bf.deserialize using our binary formatter and we can pass in the file. This will just return an object too. So we need to cast it as a save data and there we go. Now our data is loaded, so now we need to assign it back to our sliders and toggles. And instead of using four eaches like I did in the saving, I'm going to use just regular for loops this time. We'll do for int i equals zero. i is less than data dot slider values dot count. And then we'll do i plus plus just so we can access the proper index of our list. And then we'll access our slider information. So we'll do sliders i dot value equals data uh, slider values and then we'll use our i again here and that should be all good we'll also do it for our toggles so we'll just copy this for loop to make it a little bit quicker paste it there make sure make sure we switch to our toggle values even though they are the same length in this case switch this to to toggles and it'll be dot is on instead of value and then our toggle values just like that and now we're done with our file again we can just go ahead and close it file.close and then we'll do another debug message here just saying that our game was loaded properly. So there we go. Let's go back into Unity now. Go to our load button this time. Remember to unlock the inspector so we can actually select it. Then do another on click here. Canvas, drag it in. Save manager and this time load game. And let's see how this works. So we've already got our save data from before. Let's run it. Click load. And you can see that the sliders are in the same spot as when we saved it and the toggles are on the values that they were at when we saved it as well. So that'll be it for this one. If you have any questions about what I did here, let me know in the comments. If you, this did help you out for whatever game you're working on, leave a like, maybe subscribe too. But that'll be it for now. I will see you guys in the next one. Thanks for watching.